What is caching? Let's pretend you are working in a library and someone requests a specific book. Now you politely go all the way to find the book and you know that that book is somewhere right at the back of the library. Find the book they're looking for and you return. You give them the book that they are requesting and they are happy that you have met their request. However, you are finding that a lot of people are asking for the exact same book. Now you have to travel all the way again to the back of the library, find the book they are looking for so that you can return with their book and meet their request. Now this is frustrating because you're spending a lot of time getting the same book every single time. If only there was a better way to do this, but there is. What happens if we have a table right at the front desk where we keep all the books that are frequently asked? That way, when someone asks for one of these books, we can fulfill their request very quickly. If they ask for a book that's not on that table, we can go to the back and get it for them. However, the most frequently asked books will be right here in front. This is caching. The storing of data, recent or frequently accessed, so that future requests for that data can be completed faster. Basically, the faster retrieval of the data. There are different types of caching, like CPU caching, disk caching, and web caching. With CPU cache, that is special high-speed memory that's built into the CPU. So when the CPU makes requests from primary memory or RAM, it actually stores some of the frequently accessed data in cache memory, which is a lot faster, and it looks there first before it goes to the primary memory. With disk cache, your hard drive has a small amount of RAM cache built into it. When you are trying to open up a program like Microsoft Word, your computer looks first in the cache memory, and if it can't find it there, it looks in the hard drive, finds it, and loads it into memory or RAM. Now, when you close that program, a copy of it is placed in cache memory, so that the next time you open it, it first looks in cache memory and goes, hey, we've used this program recently, we can just load it from here, which means it'll load a lot faster. With web cache, let's say you are trying to find the weather for today and you see that Monday's weather is 26 degrees and it's sunny. But in a couple of days time, you go request the weather again and it says that it's Monday and it's 26 degrees and sunny. But if you look outside, it's actually raining and today's a Thursday. How is this possible? Well, recently visited web pages are stored locally. So when you went to that web page the first time, it loaded from the internet, Monday 26 degrees, sunny, and it stored a copy of that information on your hard drive. So the next time you went onto the internet to request that particular web page, it first loaded it from the hard drive. This is a problem if you're looking for information that is frequently updated or latest news. So if you want to get the latest version of that web page from the internet, you can just press F5 or the refresh symbol. Then it will reload that page from the internet and there you'll get the latest details. If you are using an app on your mobile device like Instagram, all the posts that you've already seen are stored locally on your device. So that way you can view them even if you don't have internet access. However, sometimes you want to clear the cache to make more space. If you do this, then all those previously saved posts will be cleared and you will have to reload them the next time you go online. And that is everything about caching. Did you know that we are now on TikTok at Mr. Long Education? So follow us there and subscribe here. Leave a comment so that we know which computer term you want us to do next. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.